I'm a neuroscientist and I'm primarily interested in the mechanisms by which brain cells communicate with each other. And this level of understanding is important if we're going to try and develop new treatments for things like Alzheimer's disease, or Parkinson's disease, or other conditions that affect the brain. There are two aspects to the research that I'm doing at the moment. One is looking at uh, the mechanism by which the brain um, develops and responds to positive sensory um, input. The other way that we're uh, hoping that our work will make a difference is that um, we're interested in the injured brain. Uh, so in terms of what happens to the brain after people suffer a brain injury. And we're hoping to develop a very simple set of chemical solutions that might help the brain recover after injuries like that. We have carried out quite a bit of work on uh, bullying. I mean, it's very important to make the distinction between normal conflicts children have, because every child has got conflicts and that's with friends. But bullying is really uh, done with the intention to harm someone and it's done repeatedly. Well, the first thing is that we very early on recognize uh, what bullying is. Secondly, that we understand what effect peers actually have on the development, I mean, into adulthood of children. And thirdly, is to actually have developed proper interventions. For example, developing computer programs, virtual reality, where a child can explore bullying situations and then learn from these situations of what the child could do differently, or he or she could do differently, how she could extract herself out of these particular situations, which would be very, very helpful. About seven years ago, we launched a sleep health and society program to look at the effect of sleep disturbances in the population as a whole and the effects they may have on people as well as patients. We've been looking at the effect of, for example, sleep on obesity, cardiovascular disease, and we're also looking at the underlying mechanisms that are underlie those associations between sleep and health outcomes. When we talk about sleep problems, we're talking about not only um, sleep quantity, but also sleep quality. We're also interested in sleep disorders and how that affects sleep quality and quantity as well. Sleep affects brain functions in different ways. And as we get older, we can decline towards dementia and sleep may have an important contribution to make. In the future, I'd like to look back at my research and say that we have made a significant contribution towards the understanding of the links between bad sleep and the number of physiological and pathophysiological conditions leading to health and well-being. The focus of my research over the last maybe 10, 15 years has been about, um, about healthy minds. I think most people in the general public are aware that their emotional and mental health, their psychological well-being, has an impact on all their health. So the whole mental wellbeing research agenda addresses how we can, as human beings in our various different states, enable ourselves to be healthier, what services we could provide to help people do that. There's a lot of talk at the moment about mindfulness. Um, it's one of a number of approaches that help you develop the capacity to have a still mind those approaches really make a difference because it's in that kind of state that your body can most easily heal. In the future I'd like to look back at my research and say it's made a difference.